Welcome to the Anti-Aging Collective. When we talk about side effects of NMN, we have to be very clear about terminology. NMN means nicotinamide mononucleotide, which can be confused with nicotinamide riboside or just nicotinamide or NAD. These are all molecules related to each other but are not the same. For now, we are only going to look at the side effects of these anti-aging molecules. Even though I'm a biologist and I love biological pathways, I normally do not like to explain biological pathways because it makes things often unnecessarily complicated. But in this case, I just have to so that it becomes clear what the side effects are of each molecule. First of all, let's start with the molecule NAM and NR, which both are precursors of NMN. And NMN is on its turn a precursor of NAD+, and it's the NAD+, that is used as a kind of battery to kickstart um, a lot of molecular processes in the cell. And nice analogy I often use is, for example, a small house. So I start with a small house and modify the house into a mobile home. But let us first start with a small house, which represents NAM and NR. When you change, for example, the walls with lighter materials and remove the foundation, it becomes a static caravan, which in this case represents NMN. And when you put wheels on the static caravan, it becomes a touring caravan, which represents NAD. And when you put in that touring caravan a motor and you add a little bit of fuel, you have a motorhome, which represents NAD+. Now you can go and travel, or in the case of a cell, perform cellular processes. But you have to be careful. When the fuel is finished, the motorhome converts magically, automatically in a small house with heavy walls and foundation. And you have to start all over again. This conversion from a motorhome into a small house and with a lot of energy back into a motorhome happens a lot. And it goes perfectly in young cells, but it happens to be, according to research, as we age, these conversions are declining. Which means that this NAD plus declines as we age, which is a problem. And if you want to restore these NAD levels, you can go and take supplements. To stay in the analogy, you can go and buy some small houses, which represents an R, an AM, which actually uh, is sold as niacin, but I'll come back to it later. Or you go straight to buy more static caravans, which represents NMN. All these molecules increase NAD+. So you could ask yourself, why not buy directly the motorhomes, the NAD+, just straight away? Well, it happens to be that, unfortunately, NAD as a straight supplement is very difficult to maintain in capsule form. The molecule degrades quickly when exposed to light and heat and deteriorates when exposed to water. Now you know the main molecules involved in the salvage pathway. And you also know how these molecules relate to each other, but are not the same. The last thing I have to mention is that NAD plus is involved in many biological processes, from circadian rhythms, DNA methylation, and mitochondrial function. But it all boils down to energy. Almost all cell processes that need energy need NAD plus to get that process activated. So if you followed along, you will realize that all these molecules are not the same but related. So when we talk about side effects, you need to include all the side effects of these molecules, like NAM, NR, and NMN, because they are all involved in the salvage pathway and all are sold as supplements. And if you dive into the data and extract only the human clinical trials where they researched NAM, NR and NMN, you will realize that no long-term studies have been performed. So if someone claims to know the long-term risks or claims that NMN and NR can extend lifespan, it's utterly nonsense. The data is just not generated yet. It could well be the case, but we just don't know. 
but we're talking here about side effects. So let's start with niacin. Niacin is a supplement which contains NAM, but also NA. And it is this NA that often causes problem, and that's also the reason why it's rarely used in clinical practices, because it causes continuous flushing. Flushing occurs because the blood vessels in the skin delay, which causes the skin to become red. If you take high doses of only NAM, it seems to lead to the development of a fatty liver, which is a big problem, of course. Since NA and NM also fails to penetrate through all the tissues in the body, it's less effective and therefore the main reason it's not promoted as a supplement to increase your NAD levels. That was NAM, but what about NR? Well, in all clinical trials in humans, no side effects have been found. It's about side effects, so we need something, right? So in biology, every molecule given to an organism at very, very high levels will eventually show side effects. And that's exactly what they did. In a few mice and rat experiments, where they found in rats that NR is a very well tolerated molecule. With side effects only observed at doses as high as a thousand milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Similarly, another mouse study showed that the same concentration impaired glucose tolerance and promoted white adipose tissue inflammation. This looks very bad, but keep in mind, translating these concentrations to humans, it would mean that a human needs to take 10,000 milligrams per day to reach the same levels. But in humans, high doses of an R have been administered up to 2000 mg per day without any apparent side effects. Since we want to know at which levels the first side effects will start, we have to turn our backs to mice and rats again. In a rat study where they gave rats 90 days of repeated oral administration at 375, 750 and 1500 mg per day, kilogram of body weight per day, they found no real side effects. Translated to humans, it means more than 15,000 milligrams per day. As for now, it seems that we have two supplements that are worth exploring, which is NMN and NR. Both have shown to have low or no side effects in humans. But if we also take toxicity profiles from animal data into account, it seems that at very high doses, NR will start to show some side effects, which are not present in NMN. This indicates that NMN is better tolerated. In addition, it seems that NMN in my study showed to be more effective at increasing lifespan than NR. NR also does not lead to improvements in insulin sensitivity, pancreatic function, skeletal muscle, mitochondrial content, or respiratory capacity. Maybe that is also the reason that some supplement brands are starting to make the transition from NR to NMN. Anyway, for these and many more reasons is why I personally take 500 milligrams NMN each day. Not to be cheap, because NMN is quite expensive. And I happen to be the CEO of Cellulim, and we sell NMN, so I have unlimited access to NMN. I can take as much as I want, but the reason is I tested different doses and felt most comfortable at 500 mg per day. It also seems to be backed by science. With NAD precursors, it seems that more is not always better. But I personally think the biggest safety concern though surrounds the number of fake imitation supplements out there. Many of these products are not pure NMN, but have been bulked out with other compounds. These could have safety issues if the manufacturer has not been clear about what's in there. To be safe, go for a good brand or just with Cellulin because all our batches are third party tested and again in our labs to be sure we sell pure element. And you can try it for yourself for free because we have a giveaway and all you have to do is hit the like and subscribe button and send us an email. We will make sure you receive a free bottle with high quality NMN. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and start living again because it's over before you know it.